Hey, hey, welcome to Sketchy EBM. I'm your host, Anthony Crocco, and today we're talking about number needed to treat. I think this is a great concept that people really need to understand because it shows up all the time in literature, and I think it's important for us to all get what exactly is NNT. So today we're going to look at the definition, the calculation, and the application. Let's start with the definition. Simply put, the number needed to treat is the number of patients you would have to expose to a given intervention to affect positively one. Let's look at a really simple example. In this example, the control group has three patients. One patient has a good outcome and two have a bad outcome. In the treatment group, also containing three patients, two patients have a good outcome and one patient has a bad outcome. What you'll notice in this study is that one-third of patients in both the control and treatment groups have a bad outcome regardless, and one-third of patients in both groups have a good outcome regardless. There is this other third of patients, though, who in the control group have a bad outcome and in the treatment group have a good outcome. These are the patients who are said to benefit. How we calculate the NNT from more complex numerical data is pretty straightforward. The number needed to treat is 1 over the absolute risk reduction. What is the absolute risk reduction, you may ask? Well, it is the event rate in the control group minus the event rate in the treatment group. If we go back to our earlier example, the event rate in the control group, bad outcome, is 2 thirds. The event rate in the treatment group is one-third, giving us a difference of one-third, or 0.33. If we plug this into our NNT equation, 1 over the absolute risk reduction, the NNT becomes 1 over 0.33, or 3. For every three patients that we treat, one benefits. An important side note here is that an NNT of 3 only tells you that one in three patients will benefit. It doesn't tell you what the outcomes are for the other two patients. They may benefit regardless, or have poor outcome regardless. The NNT doesn't tell you that. So there it is, the definition and calculation of NNT. Pretty straightforward, I hope. One of the questions that often comes up is what is a good NNT? For the most part, lower NNTs are better than higher NNTs, but that doesn't tell the whole story. And I think the best way for us to understand this is to use three different examples. Let's look at an NNT of 5, an NNT of 50, and an NNT of 50,000. Just looking at these numbers, you might say 5 is better than 50,000. You only have to treat 5 patients. Great! So let's look at the study where the NNT was 5. Bear in mind, all of these studies are fictitious. In this study, the NNT was 5, and the benefit was one less flatulence per day. For every 5 patients treated, one patient had one less flatus per day. When you dig a little deeper into the results section, you find out that the patients treated had a 50% chance of fatal MI. I think none of us would take the gamble of 50% chance of fatal MI for one patient and five to benefit. In our second fictitious study, the NNT is 50. The benefit is one less admission. For every 50 patients treated, one patient does not have to be admitted to hospital. There are no adverse effects with this treatment, but when you dig a little deeper, you find out that this new therapy costs $1 million per dose, meaning even at one dose per patient, you'd have to spend $50 million to prevent one admission. Doesn't sound like good value for the money. In our final study, the NNT is 50,000. In this case, the benefit is one less mortality. For every 50,000 patients treated with this intervention, one doesn't die. In this case, there are no adverse effects, and the therapy is free. You would argue that everybody should be doing this, even with such a high NNT. A number of public health initiatives fall into this category of significant benefit, minimal harm and cost, but higher NNTs. So at the end of the day, we're still left with the question, what is a good NNT? As now I'm sure you realize, it depends. It depends on what the benefit is in the study. It also depends on any harms that the patient is exposed to and the cost of the therapy. The value of the NNT is not simply the number. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Sketchy EBM. Please do take the time to evaluate this episode, and until next time, always remember to draw your own conclusions.